Today's episode of The Ride Podcast is brought to you by The Click Ring. Wear the ring and show the world that you can live your line at clicring.com. Hello, fellow riders. This is your host, Rusty James. It is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015, and this is The Ride. Hello, everyone. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? You got it. Call me the crooner. It's a great day. It's the day the Lord has made. And I'm ready to be happy in it. Even though my car is needing to go into the shop and I am limping on it right now as I go to work. Yesterday I found out that it looked like the oil was low, but there's something more sinister going on under the hood. So I took care of the oil thing, but it's still not running like it should, so I'm going to have to take this bad boy in. I'm praying that my car makes it to work in good shape. Is it okay to pray for your vehicle? I'm going to pray for it. I can pray for healing on my vehicle. Recently, I came across a a YouTube video where this pastor was talking about how prayer, I mean healing, praying for healing, is no longer in effect. And I thought, well, that's kind of silly. Seems how Jesus himself said the power that was within him is now in us. And greater things we would do than he even did. So if, if I'm to agree with that particular pastor's opinion and his interpretation of scripture, because I'm sure he had plenty of time to think about it and come up with that opinion... I'm not really sure why you would want to limit what God can do, but whatever, my opinion differs, I believe, for healing. I've received healing, and it wasn't wishful thinking, it was healing. But you know, it's kind of silly to think about how someone would reject the fact that God can heal our physical bodies when there is an expectation that people can get saved because people getting saved, that's a healing that's even deeper. It's a spiritual rebirth. It's a new creation kind of healing. And in many ways, much more profound than just the healing of bodily tissue and chemicals in the body and getting healed from a cold or or whatever. I don't know. Just something I think about. You know what I'm saying? I believe for healing. So I'm going to pray for my car so it can be healed. I don't know what the deal is with this thing, but I'm really having to be cautious with it. You can hear that? Can you hear that? Ugh. That's not a good sound. I'm laying my hands on the car right now. Lord God, please help this car make it. You know everything about this car. You know everything about the engineers who engineered this car. I'm praying that everything that needs to be lined up in here is lined up. I pray for cars. Every rider that's listening to me, I pray that their cars are healed in Jesus name I don't have time to mess around amen okay amen so today is a day of salvation do you know that today is the day of salvation you can say that any day of the week and I don't know why you're listening today but I gotcha If you've never heard, if you've never heard 
about this Jesus or had a hard time wanting to, I don't know, turn, turn your life over to this Jesus, I'd like to present a case for you today. And it's very simple. Very simple. And even if you have heard this before, listen, time is short on this planet and we need to know that we know that we have a relationship to God through His Son, Jesus. So here's the case. Once upon a time, humanity was in good shape. It was in a perfect relationship with God. That's how God wants it to be. That's how God created it to be. We had a relationship with God and it was pure and holy. There was no shame and everything was good. But do you know that, I don't know if you guys know this, but Satan was a worship leader in heaven at one point. And worship leaders, they kind of act in a priestly role in the sense that they affect the environment. You've heard me talk about the environment a lot. The environment, you know, the, the, the culture of the moment you're in, the, the cloud of what's going on. Priests would impact that. As worship leaders, as worshipers, as musicians, they affect the environment. You know, the priests would do the incense stuff and they would ensure that the, the environment allowed for the Lord to move. Well, Satan, as a worship leader in heaven, got full of himself and God cast him down out of heaven. He took a third of the angels, fallen angels, and they are our enemy. So when I talk about the enemy, that's who the enemy is. People aren't the enemy. Bad situations aren't the enemy. Our enemy is a spiritual entity, if you will. And because of the fall of man, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that brought sin into man. And because God cannot relate with sin, there, therein lies a problem. And from time immortal, God knew that that would happen. And God knew that he would send his son to be a sacrifice to cover the sin, to pay for the sin that was part of the humanity problem. So that's why Jesus came to the earth. Not so that we could celebrate Christmas, although I don't have any problem with that. It's a great tradition. But the reason he came wasn't the manger story. It was the cross story. And Jesus showed us when he was on earth, he showed us in his relationship with the disciples and with the crowds and with his close friends, a picture of God that we had never seen before. And so his ministry taught us things and we've got the word of God to show us that. And Jesus declared that he was God. He was the son of God. He was fully man and fully God. He was tempted and was successful, successful in battling the enemy. And he went to the cross knowing that's what his plan was and that's what the will of God was. And even though he didn't, you know, he prayed that that cup would be taken from him, that he wouldn't have to do that. Nonetheless, he went ahead and did the will of the Father. And he died a physical death. But even more importantly, he died a spiritual death. Which I've talked about in a podcast once before, but I want to reiterate. When Jesus went to the cross for you and me, 
the biggest thing that he did wasn't enduring pain and suffering of his physical body and the humiliation of a death on the cross. But when he died for our sins, he had a spiritual death. He actually endured what none of us will ever have to do if we accept what, he, what Jesus did. Because what he had to endure was a separation from God the Father. That's the spiritual death. You know, physical death, if we thought about it a lot, we might be worried about, you know, the pain of it. The, You know, many of us have seen people go through cancer, things like that, and it's not easily bearable. But the most tragic thing is the spiritual death part. And Jesus did that for us. But don't you know, he conquered death. He conquered the physical death because he rose again in bodily form, but he also conquered spiritual death. And he took the keys from our enemy that would have locked us up, would have trapped us and bound us up. And he did that for you. Why would he do that? Because you were created to know God and to know the promises of God and to know the person of God. You were created for that. I was created for that. And without that, it's like we're a car on a road to work with something wrong with the engine. And God's the mechanic. In fact, God already knows what's the deal with your car. In fact, he, there's already a recall notice out for it. So today, we can choose to have the mechanic come into our life and correct the car. Doesn't mean there won't be bumps along the road after he corrects the car, but the recall can occur. The correction can be made. When you accept the Lord into your life, and it's a very simple thing, you're just acknowledging that He is the Son of God. Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That there is a Father who loves you and who sent His Son for you to take care of the sin problem so that you can have a relationship with God the Father. Jesus restored what had been broken back in the garden. And he wants to come to us today as the mechanic. And he wants to say, pull your car into the shop here. Will you let me have my way with your ride? That's all it is. In Luke, it talks about how the Lord didn't come for the perfect people, for the religious perfect people who look down their nose at others. No, he came for the prostitutes, the sinners, the tax collectors, the people who need a physician. So no matter who you are, if you think you're one of these perfect people, or if you think that you're not one of the perfect people, perfect. You know why? Because you're not as perfect as you think, and you're not as bad as you think either. But without Jesus, all have sinned, and we have come short of the glory of God. And God has an invitation for you today to grab a hold of the glory of God, the glory of God in your life. In this day we live in, being a Christian is not some glamour position, but it is a position of power. He gives us power to live our life. When we're resting in His power and His presence in our life, nothing's going to stop you. No enemy is going to stop you. Because as we grow and mature in Christ, we get to know what God's will is for our life. Kind of little by little, I'm still learning. 
many of you are still learning what that is. But if you've had setbacks and you felt like my car is just not running on all the cylinders, well, today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. And you could have you could have accepted Christ into your heart many years ago. That's fine. We're going to pray a prayer in a minute. And I really want you to just look inside your life. Look inside your life. Kind of objectively, as, as objectively as you can. And if, if you know that you need God, if you know that you need Him, whether you've accepted Him in the past or not, I want to encourage you to pray this with me, okay? Here we go. Lord God, I know that you're there and I know that you hear me right now. And I know that I am well aware and that you are well aware of my failures and where I've missed it. But I know that you have grace for me and I know that you love me. And I know that you want me to succeed in life. I know that you created me to have a relationship with you. And I want to have that relationship with you unhindered. I want my ride to be powerful, to be effective. I want my life to make a difference. I want my relationships to my family and to my friends and to everyone that I interact with to be godly, to be full of power, to be the way you created me to be. Today I want that, Lord. And today I give up control. My control the control that I've had for so long that we both know has brought my ride into places that it shouldn't have been. Lord, I ask that you come into my life, that you change me from the inside out, and that you help renew my mind Renew my mind, Lord, so that I don't have to be reminded that you love me, but that I know that you do, even if I miss it at times. I thank you that you have helped my life so far. I thank you that you've brought the right people into my life. And I pray that the people that need you the most, that I can help them. And that I can, through the life that you're living in me, starting right now, that I can make an impact in their life. So I thank you for your finished work you did on the cross when you purchased me. And now I am giving myself to you. I believe I'm in good hands, the mechanic's hands. And I look forward to the days ahead in this new ride of mine. Thank you for all you've done, Lord God, and all you're going to do. I am a new creature. I am a new creation today. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Lord God, and you are my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. 
that right there could be what you've been looking for. In fact, if you prayed that for the first time or even for the 50th time, I don't want it to seem like a minimal thing. That was a very powerful thing that you just did. And I applaud you for putting your life into his hands. We need to do that every day. Every day. So the way that I will leave this podcast today is just as a reminder that if you if you do not have a place where you are meeting with other Christians, I I want to encourage you that it is important. You need to find a place where other believers gather so that you can have community, so you can have this iron sharpening iron situation. So it's not just you against the world, but it's you with a community living for God. So I want to encourage you to seek that out. And also, obviously, you know me, you need to stay in that word. You need to live peaceably with your neighbors, pray for those who persecute you, and remember, your life is now a new creation. And I will see you on the flip.